In this tutorial in Cyberlink Audio Director, we're going to give you some tips on how to navigate around the edit screen in the program. We'd like to show you a little bit about its capabilities and give you even a couple of shortcuts along the way. This is for people who are relatively new to Audio Director. The screen is broken up into three major areas. The first is the content area, the second is the adjustment area, and the third is the display area. The content area is where you can pull in your audio files. The most common way you'll do that is clicking on the icon of the folder with a down arrow, and then that will take you to your file system. You can go anywhere you want in the file system and click one or more files and click on open and it will pull them into your edit area. If you want to listen to any one of them without putting them on the track or loading them, you can click on the right arrow with a circle and that's your play. That will play that track alone. And likewise, you can stop it. If you want to delete any of them, you simply click on the garbage can highlighted and it will remove that file from your project. It does not remove the file from your computer. It only takes it away from the project. Now this will be the most common way in which you'll bring a file into your project. The second button is one you may use occasionally. It's called the Sound Clips Library. When you click on it, it will take you to 87 Sound Clips. Now I think this is misnamed. It's really Sound Effects. Many of them are only a fraction of a second or a second long. You can use it if you want to edit or augment what you have with sound effects. You'll probably want to add a lot more sound effects in the course of time. And if you want to do that, well, the third icon is helpful. That takes you to the director zone. It's a place where you can add audio clips uh, that you find that have been shared there for public use. The fourth one takes you to the Cyberlink Cloud. If you're a cloud service subscriber, that's where you find items that you have stored up in the cloud. You can bring them down and use them in whatever current project you're working on. Then you have a sort button. There are three sorts here. First is alphabetical by the name of the audio file. The second with the hourglass is by length. And you can do this from ascending to descending as well. The third is the created time of the file, ascending or descending. So that's your content area. And you can make it larger or smaller if you want, simply by clicking on the four dots and stretching out the area of that frame. The frame below it is your adjustment area. That contains two categories of adjustments. One is adjusting audio. The third is applying effect. If I click on Adjusting Audio, I see the various audio adjustments I can make. If I click on Applied Effect, I see the effects I can apply. Now you may have noticed, when I click on Applied Effect, this tab become, became active. When I do Audio Adjust, the other one is active. So these two are tied to whichever set of controls you're going to use. And if you click on the double up arrow here, you see that when we're in the volume control area, I can do some keyframing for my volume track and my pan track. When I'm in the applying effect area, this tab is active and I will see whatever effects I have applied to that particular audio clip and I can go ahead and do things with them or delete them altogether. So these two tabs are tied to these two features on the left and I can do the double arrow down just to shrink it. Let's look at our main display area and see what we see here. We see the waveform of this particular clip that I have. Right now it's my bass.wave and I can view it in several ways. You'll use this one a lot. I can zoom in and out by using the slider and that will show me in detail uh, the nature of that particular clip. I can uh, just move in and out in a smaller way by clicking on the minus magnifying glass that will back me out or the plus that will make it larger. I can also adjust the height of the display of the waveform. Let's back out a bit here and by clicking on the plus magnifying glass here with the up down arrow that will make it longer. It'll stretch it up or back down the other way. I do not have a slider with this control. 
If I want to go back to the default where I have a full screen view of it, I simply click on the box to the right and that will give me my default. It fits within the visible area and it's in the default size and ratio. So that gives me an example of that. Now there are two options on how I can see all this. I can see this as time code, which is my default, or by bar beat. Now when I click on this icon, you'll notice there's a change down here. It gives me a suggested beats per minute. It's got metronome controls. We'll deal with that later. But when I click on time code, that disappears. I can also, when I have left and right tracks, edit both of them together, which is my default, or I can click to the left and it will allow me to edit either in the left track or in the right track. And all I need to do is click on whichever one I want to edit at the time or go back to all tracks. We're on the default mode, which gives us the waveform. I can click to the right of this on the other icon here and that will give me my spectral frequency view. Uh, in certain kind of situations, we'll want that information, but most of the time, we'll stay in waveform. I have my time indicator here. I can click anywhere at all in the visible area, and I will see that that time was reflected as both the start time and the end time with no length between them. And so I can, I can slide it and move it, or I can just click where I want to go. In order to go to the beginning, I can click on the control over here, jump to start, or the easier way, here's a shortcut coming, I can click the, the comma key on the keyboard, and then I can click the period key on the keyboard to go to the end. This is identical to the controls that you find in PowerDirector. So comma, or left arrow, and period or right arrow, at the bottom of the keyboard keys goes beginning and end. That's nice. You can also play by clicking over here at the right triangle or you can hit spacebar and spacebar will go ahead and it will play your clip from wherever your uh, current time happens to be. You have some icons above too that light up or stay gray. Well, many of these are keyed to whether you're working with a range and to work with a range, all you do is you, you take your time indicator and you click on either one of the gold markers and you stretch it out. Now I'm working with a range. We see a start time, we see an end time, and we see a length. And now these options become available. I've got cut, copy, delete, paste, a few others we'll deal with later. Uh, but they tie into working with a range. If you don't want to work with a range, just click anywhere else and it will automatically go back to your normal uh, option where you just have your time indicator. So those are some of the basics of working with the edit screen. We have three other screens. We have a restore screen. We have a mix screen that you may use a lot and a create CD screen that we'll deal with separately. But your basic editing of a single track will be done in this particular screen. When you're done and you want to save the project, you can click on the uh, icon of the floppy disk, which isn't used anymore, in the upper right, or do Control S, which is quicker. When you want to produce the project, you can right click anywhere and click on Produce, and this will create a copy of your edited file, and it will add it into your media area as a new file as well but it does exist separately in your file system. So that's a quick overview of some of the initial things you'll find on the edit screen in CyberLink Audio Director.